Are you a football fan? Have you ever found yourself wondering, what in the world was that ref thinking? Well, Mike D, the referee, is here to help you. Join me on Whistle Talk. I talk to professionals on the field and in the booth to help you understand what is going on inside the mind of a football official. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here once again with our next episode of Whistle Talk. Uh, today with me, I have a uh, a little bit of a unique guest today, uh, kind of going out of the realm of the officiating and the coaching world, but somebody who is definitely familiar with the football world. Uh, I've got with me today Mr. John Bronson. Um, but before we dive into it, please, ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying the show, make sure you hit those like buttons, hit the subscribe, send me your comments. Go to my YouTube page. You'll be able to see the the live the, the broadcast of it, not the live broadcast, but the broadcast of it on YouTube. Also, you see my link right there. Uh, and with that being said, John, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. How are you doing today, sir? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, another day, just moving. Always busy, but life is good. That's great to hear. So, uh, John, why don't you uh, let, let the listeners know a little bit uh, uh, about yourself, a little bit about your, your backstory, your football knowledge, and then uh, what, you're, what you're working on these days. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is John Bronson. I come from a, a, a sports family. Uh, I'll start there. My, uh, I'm the oldest of four. Three of my brothers uh, played professionally. Uh, of course, I played the Cardinals. My middle brother played the Seahawks uh, in that Super Bowl, uh, those Super Bowl runs. And then my little brother uh, still playing. He's um, he's uh, he's been been in a lot of different places: uh, Saints, uh, Dolphins, Cowboys, and just recently got picked up at the Colts. So, uh, so you can say I come from a a, a nice lineage of sport. And then my sister, also uh, a, uh, a a high profile college, collegiate athlete that uh, ran uh, ran track and played basketball. So. I come from a, a, a long line of sports there, so I'm, I'm happy on that. For me, I went to Penn State, went to, uh, as my alma mater, uh, had a great time there, graduated uh, four years, uh, obviously, I don't know, three years started there. You know, and unique about me, I played Divas of in college, and then I transitioned to tight end in my senior year. Um, that helped actually working out well for me in the, in the league, I ended up going to the league, to the Arizona Cardinals as a tight end. You know, made the team as an undrafted uh, rookie free agent. Uh, stuck around there for, you know, just shy of three years. Had a great time. Played with a lot of greats. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, who a lot of people know. Uh, Brian Johnson, who I went to school with at Penn State. Anquan Bowden, Kurt Warner. Uh, Edron James in my second year. Uh, Matt Liner, and I mean, the list goes on. Levi yeah. Brown, who am I missing? Darnell Dockett. Tons <laughs> of great, great guys I played with uh, in, in Arizona. So we had a great time there. And, uh, you know, from there, just a transition. You know, I, I learned a lot from sport, uh, from the business of sport, and transition into into business, started business in real estate. And and then, uh, uh, and, and then I eventually morphed that into starting a network uh, for professional athletes to connect with the community uh, in Arizona, grew that to a bunch of different locations. Uh, after I had a pivot there, traveled the world for, for a long time. Uh, actually, excuse me, before that, also was president of the NFLPA chapter uh, in Arizona uh, for a number of years. Uh, then traveled the world for a while, for about seven years. Uh, lived everywhere from Caribbean to Europe to Southeast Asia. So I've been all over. And then, yeah, yeah. Recently came back to the U.S. Uh, last last year. Uh, I mean, my wife, we had a, had a, had a, uh, a beautiful daughter. She's now 10 months. And, uh, you know, living Congrats. in South Florida. Thank you. Thank you. And. Um, you know, one of the biggest things there was when I when I came back in, I wanted to, you know, surround myself with something that was impactful um, and that can really uh, make a difference and something that I, you know, really understood and 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 all and unfortunately or unfortunately been a part of, and which was obviously you know concussions and concussion care. So um, uh, most most recently, a few months ago, um, I uh, I joined a, uh, a company as their chief business officer of Conan MedTech. Uh, basically, uh, you know, what we say is we're here to revolutionize concussion care. So we invented this real-time concussion detection de device that uh, that really helps uh, from a saliva that can help in real time, basically be able to help diagnose concussions uh, on site. So um, I, I say the biggest thing behind that is is uh, there's a little bit of a gap for 
you know, players that end up getting concussions or those that are, and parents that don't know what to do if their kids get concussions. So, you know, we're, we're looking to alleviate that, that pain a little bit by at least getting some more information so they can get, get that uh, diagnosis to their physician and, 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 you know, more help to, to get more answers about their particular situation. So yeah, yeah absolutely. A about me. No, that, that listen, uh, you, you, you've had a, a great run there, a uh, great family lineage. So that, all those things are awesome to hear. Um, and, and now working with this company, uh, Conan MedTech, it's fantastic stuff. And, and that's actually the main reason why um, I was looking, reaching out to you to try to bring you on today. Um, because I'm still involved in coaching. I'm still involved in officiating, obviously, um, as we talked about pre-production. And I'm still seeing it at the youth level, at the high school level. You're still seeing it at the collegiate level. And, and now you're you're down in South Florida. Mm-hmm. We just had to uh, Tonga Vailoa. I apologize. Uh, I, I'm terrible at saying his last name. No, uh, that's Tua, Tua got another concussion. And now this past mm-hmm. weekend we had uh, Devonta Smith uh, get a concussion. So I, I know there's a lot of different technologies out there. And I, and I know that all the different leagues are, are working towards a preventative measures and then B, okay, it is still a contact sport. It is still a collision sport. It is unfortunately going to happen. What can they do to identify it? So that that's where mm-hmm. I thought bringing you in would be great. So why don't yeah. you, uh, if you could describe the, the, the product that you guys are working with. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, it's a real time concussion detection. And I say detection because, you know, as you may alluded to, there's a lot of uh, different companies who are working in the protection aspect, which is also very important. So mm-hmm. and look, we're one of those, we're one of those that we're, we're looking to continue to wrap our arms and partner with those protection companies and, and, and help to close the gap on it. But the reality is, is that we're talking about, you know, especially if we're talking about sport, especially if we're talking about contact sport, we're talking about, um, you know, collisions to your to the body that's not normally going to happen to to everyday everyday people who are you know uh, unless you get into a, a situation, right? And so from us, we we what we did was we realized, okay, look, football is not going anywhere. Um, you know, uh, other contact sports, whether it be um, hockey, you know, even boxing, those things are not going anywhere, right? Um, for for a while. So how can we help to at least alleviate from a detection aspect? And I say, look, if you if you break your arm, you're not going to wood. You're going to see that you've broken your arm, right? So yes. you're going to be able to, you're going to get the help. You're going to go to the doctor. So it's not the same thing when it's related to concussion, right? And so, well, concussion, you know, I, I know I've had about you know three or four, five or more, you know, myself, <laughs> some that I probably don't even remember, right? And um, and and you just kind of shake it off as like you know part of the game and et cetera. So so in our aspect, what we're doing is really. Uh, focusing on that detection aspect. We understand that it's going to happen. When it does happen, we, you want to take measures to be able to take the next step faster, right? And uh, there's a uh, – what we've been – when we understood that in under 24 hours, if you can detect a concussion under 24 hours, you can really help to mitigate a lot of the longer-term effects that will happen later in life. You know, you hear about uh, what Brett Farr just came out yesterday uh, – uh, suggesting that he had, um, uh, uh, saying that that he had, uh, what was it? Um, uh, I forgot exactly what it was, but a, a particular disease. Unfortunately, you know, you've heard about CTE. You hear about CTE, epilepsy. yeah, yeah. You hear about all these things, right? And so, um, the unfortunate part, as myself and a lot of players that already went through it prior to this, you know, we already got to face whatever is we got to face uh, moving forward, and maybe some therapies that'll help us. But what we can do is help those kids those that are coming up and and uh from from the league elite sport all the way down to youth sports and beyond to be able to understand that hey there's a better way you can get detection a lot faster to be able to take the next the measures to reduce any potential sick, sick, uh, symptoms and outcomes that uh could last you a long time yeah and, and you said it i i'm a little bit older than you john uh and back when I played, I played Division Three football. I, I didn't have the, the Division One contact that you were having on a consistent basis. I was an offensive lineman, though. So I actually got diagnosed with my first concussion about four years ago when I got okay. hit in the side of the head with a volleyball. I'm a phys ed teacher by nature, and I got hit in the side of the head with a volleyball. That's yeah. my first 
diagnosed concussion. Correct. Like you said, I know I've had others. I yeah. I couldn't tell you what, what what the number is because back in the day I got my bell rung. And, Absolutely. And, and and to that point, you know, I always say you did mention about two and look, I said, look, for everyone two a hit that is like you see it and of course it's on national TV. There's there's about five or ten others that never you know, they don't get publicized that, you know, a player may just shake off. So what we also want to do is make sure, look, you know, that, that you know, that there's a, a situation where you can at least understand exactly where you are to whether that being, uh, hey, look, you you know, you got you got tested real quick and you can go back in the game or, hey, you got tested and, it, and you got concussed. So, you know, you may want to stay out. And so this will really kind of close the gap in that aspect to be able to to make the best decision and informed decision for players, uh, athletic trainers, you know, all the way up. Yeah, and that, that that's great stuff. And I, I know now being at the youth level and, and working with the high school kids as an official, there's key things that, that we're being trained to look for, but I'm a phys ed teacher. I'm not a doctor. So it's, it's tough. Right. And, and like you said, uh, it's even tough for doctors to truly diagnose the level of concussion because sometimes the MRI is not there. And then you got to deal with post concussion type of symptoms and different things like that. So being able to identify it right then and there within minutes, as opposed to days or weeks, that that's fantastic stuff. Absolutely. So I mean, let's, you know, let's talk about that for a second. I mean, even let's say, you know, you go through the normal chain you know, uh, let's say a kid gets hit, and, uh, you know, uh, and get concussed. You know, parents may you may not make uh, take the kid to the doctor. Well, you got to go sit in the doctor's appointment, uh, find a doctor's appointment, then sit there. Then right now, it's currently mostly blood work related. So, you know, you may have a two or three days, maybe a week before you get the results. Well, that's a long stretch of time before you can at least understand where, where the baseline is. So what we're doing is just closing the gap and being able to have that information in real time. So, and when I say that information, so how it works is, is that we have this little device, I say, uh, maybe the size smaller than a pregnancy test, right? But same kind of functionality, okay. right? And then uh, basically it's just, but it's a, it's a spit, it's a saliva. So you, 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 you use the saliva to help to detect uh, the uh, whether, you know, you've got concussed or not. And then from there, that information is transferred to an app that will literally spell, uh, spit out a report that you can give to the athletic trainer, give to the physician, or whoever to help speed up that uh, that care for that particular uh, person. So it just it helps to put the the power back into how to be able to, to to get the problem resolved a lot faster. And initially, you want to get players back if it's a player back on the field. You know, one thing that we're doing in addition to that is making sure that you know we we cover the same aspect for military, and then we're learning mm -hmm. as we go. You just talked about volleyball, right? And getting ahead with in the volleyball. And, uh, you know, we're learning every day of different uh, means of how people are getting concussed. And we want to make sure that we have this portable uh, device that's really available, just as you would uh, the Band-Aids and the, and the peroxide in an emergency kit, really available for whenever that, that time of need. Yeah, it, and it's pretty scary. I actually, I have your uh, your company's website up here and just looking at some of the statistics that, that, that you guys pulled from the CDC. Um, yeah. But four four million plus concussions a year in the United States that are from sports related type of injuries. Now, again, you mentioned uh, the contact sports. A lot of people don't realize um, soccer, cheerleading. There's there's a number of other sports where people aren't thinking as your stereotypical contact sport like boxing and football and hockey that you're getting the concussions. Um, and uh, again, I'm just looking quickly at the stats here. 40% of the athletes say that their coaches don't diagnose them properly and, and or they're yep. in 69 are playing while suffering from a concussion and they're continuing to play. So th those are some scary things. And, and now that today learning what's going on with CTE and seeing the effects that players that I grew up watching play football um, have episodes to the point that some people are taking their own lives because of stuff that wasn't diagnosed when they were younger. That's scary stuff. It's really scary stuff. And and the more that we as a football community can do to help this and keep our sport that we love going, I think stuff like what you're talking about is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the reality is that, look, you know, it's, it, it, we're talking about contact sport, right? And so 
when you're when you're in a contact sport, you are liable to get some type of uh, injury, especially when you're using whether you attend to or not your head as a weapon. Right. That is just the nature of it. So um, whether it happens on accident or not, it's it, it'll happen. So the best thing you can do uh, is to try to do your best to mitigate it from a detection aspect. And 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 on, and on the other side have more protective measures and, and uh, companies that are coming out with more protective things to, you know, to really balance out how to be able to control, you know, having less concussions. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know my son's team, I, I, my son's on a 12 U team. Um, we wear the guardian caps, which is one of the protective yeah. measures that you're referring to. It's a, it's pretty, uh, pretty well known in the football world. They wear it for every single practice. Um, here in New Jersey, and I think it's NFACS is allowing for the high school players to wear the guardian caps during the game. It's by choice. And now you're seeing the trickling tri trickle up effect, actually. Uh, I think last I looked, I think there are five or six NFL players that are wearing guardian caps in the games. Now, I think it's mandated in practice that they have to wear it, but in games, there's about five or six of them that are wearing it, and they've got their logo kind of stretched out across sure. it, so it's kind of hiding it. Um, yeah. It, 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 go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I was going to say, are, are there any other different types of devices that, that you're aware of? That I know Q-Collar is another one that, that that's out there. I've seen, uh, yes, I actually met with the company, uh, uh, you know, again, like I said, you know, my whole premise is, of course, we're going to do our our part in, in helping the detection. But that's basically saying, hey, you got concussed. Here's what's next. Yeah. We also, a part to that is, want to make sure that we partner with those that can help in the protection aspect. So I actually met with a company a few weeks back. Um, gosh, I'm going to butcher their name right now. I have to send to uh, Shiesty, but it's a very uh, Shiesty cap or something like that. I, I have to come back to that. And I'll get it to you for the, for the, for the okay. people. Um, but it's, I mean, uh, I saw the demonstration, literally, um, it's a cap you wear inside of the helmet. Uh, okay. I'm going to make the demonstration real quick. Basically, God put his hand on the outside of the pad, took a hammer, uh, had the pad, took a hammer to it, and literally you can hit his hammer and didn't feel a thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the reduction already, so I'm sure it, it'll be, you know, it'll eventually make its way through. And this is one to really take notice of and, and to take a look at. And there's not, no takeaway of what's out there already, but this is the first one I've seen that is in that you wear as a like as a cap. Like let's say you're going out in the cold and in the in you know yep. in, in Pennsylvania and it's freezing cold and you got one of them, them caps on. But think about one that's like you know thick for it that you can still wear over your helmet doesn't um, doesn't uh, you know maneuver your ability and at the same time gives you from prote more protection uh, to be able to make sure that you. Uh, you know, all protected from your head. So I'm re I really like what the, what they have going on there on the protective side to really enhance. But I think the the moral of the story here is that at least there's some there where we're really starting to think about how to protect you know the head, right? Protect the neural. And this is what's important, you know, for 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 not just sport, unfortunately, but for other aspects. But specifically in, in sports where you know day in day out you're going to be hitting, uh, you know, hitting somebody on the other end you know, for football or, or boxing, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, there, there's, there, there's some good stuff. I'll have to send you the, the name, name so I don't butcher it uh, uh, too much here. Not a problem, man. I'll definitely throw that into the, uh, into the show notes for, for the listeners that are out there. Um, so you, you description that you gave earlier about, about your playing career and, and your family's playing career, you've gone through multiple levels and your family's gone through multiple levels in the sport um, and achieved at the highest level. I got to ask you a question now from, from an official's point of view, mm -hmm. what are you, what are you seeing now? And, and what, what is, if I could ask what your family is seeing, is the stuff working that that the leagues are doing and you don't have we're not going to say any specific leagues we don't want to give anything up but is there something that as officials that we can be doing better to to help on the preventative or even with the diag diagnostic type of scenario that that you're seeing that's going on in the sport because again I, I love football my son's still involved in it I'm still coaching it I've been it I'm 50 years old now I've been involved in the sport since I was uh 16 so it's a pretty long majority of my life that I've been involved in the sport of football and I want to see it continue to grow. 
Yeah. You, you know, look, as a fisher, you're doing all you can do out there, and you, you got one pair of eyes and, what, you got, what, four fishers on the field? And so, I mean, of course, you, you're doing your best to, to see things in real time and to call it how, how it is, you know, in real time. And, of course, you know, in certain as, certain uh, uh, evolutions of football, you got an you got replays, so that, that helps as well in certain aspects, you know, to be able to go back to the tape. But that's not really the case for youth sports, I don't believe, at least in, in – in Florida, where my nephew is, you know, playing, et cetera. To that point, I mean, you look, I, I don't, I'm not sure how much more you can do other than calling, keep calling how it is, right? And 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 continue to take a, a big step towards player safety in terms of, you know, if somebody's hitting with their head down, you know, maybe, uh, and even if they miss, give them a warning. Hey, look, you know, keep your head up, you know, you know, next time you, you know, get a foul if you're, if you if you hit, actually hit somebody. But I think from what I see. I think all is is being done. Again, we're talking about a contact sport that is that that you basically have trained to. You know, the goal is to literally hit the other person, like so, and 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 your head is a part of your body, even though you're trying to keep your head out of it. Sometimes it just doesn't add up that way. I know in my day it wasn't, you know, um, you know, it wasn't nowhere near significant as now of how they train. Or to try to train you to keep your head out of out of the tackle, right, and, and tackle in different ways. So you're just doing whatever you need to do to make the tackle. Now they take a little bit more more steps as far as coaches and 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 uh, and trainers, et cetera, to help kids and and players keep their head out of the tackle so they don't get penalties and, and fouls and et cetera, and obviously stay safer. But as a as a as a as an official, I think you know. Look, I mean, your job is is to call the play how it is, right? And it's not you're not the one training and teaching the kids. Um, so yeah, I, I, I honestly, I don't see, um, you know, a whole lot more you can do right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what about from the coaching side? What, what what are some things that you're possibly seeing on a coaching side or hearing from, from people that, that we can do better and I'll put my coaching hat on now that we can sure. do better in teaching the kids about tackling. Cause I know we all take the different measures. We, we got to watch the different videos and stuff like that, that the, that they mandate my son's part of the AYF program. So they mandate some tackling videos and, and teaching that. Um, is there anything specific that you could pass along to coaches out there? You know, it's just continued repetition, uh, you know, trying to keep your head up. I know like uh, there's organizations like heads up and, I believe like USA football and those, you know, organizations that, you know, try to try to have different trainers and et cetera out in certain aspects to teach that stuff and et cetera. Um, you know, but again, you know, like I said, we're kind of talking about contact, we're talking about contact sports. So it's just more repetition of, of how to tackle. I know like, um, so my brother played for my middle brother played for Demetrius. He played for Seattle. And I remember when I was, uh, he, he was, he was a running back, but I remember, I was always watching uh, how they tackled and and uh, and in, in practice, and they would have this. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's a specific like um, it was more used for rugby. It was like a rugby style of tackling. Mm -hmm. So uh, and like how rugby players tackle, and so they kind of they adopted that method to really help player safety. And I think those are the kind of methods. If you look a lot what rugby players do, look, they don't have helmets, so they're not putting their head in. In, 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 in a play, right? So they're they're automatically trained to keep their head out of a play. And, of course, I'm sure things happen on, on accident, et cetera. But, you know, just measures like that and just learning how to keep your head up, um, you know, and, and stay lower. But, again, it's tough when you're in a heat of battle and, and you're a safety and you're barreling down on a player trying to make a tackle that's already low and, and you're trying to get lower than they are so you don't keep you get your head out. And then, you know, sometimes you just do have a head-to-head -head collision or – or looks that way, um, or or ricochet, you know, uh, yep. slide yep. Your helmet slides from a shoulder pads to a to a face mask on accident. I mean, there's it's it's a lot happening when you're got that much speed, that much uh, enforce enforcement on a play that um, you know players are, are bringing today. So I think just more of just just more more education, more training, and 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 also I think on the other side maybe some the importance of why. That's probably what's missing, right? Here's why. And I don't care if you got to bring a ton of foreign players out to be like, look, you know, this or see statistics because look, they're out there today, especially related to CTE. It's high. It's like you know, I think I saw I saw a statistic like out of a hundred players that did a survey on a they did a survey on like ninety eight of them had CTE. That Oof. is insane. 
that is insane, right? So if you, so if you look at that, maybe from a player standpoint, they're going to take, they're going to kind of like mentally try to adjust to ensure that their head is out of a plate as best as they can. Again, that's tough when you're talking about an interior lineman who's what? Their job is you take off and your head goes right through to, to a, to, to a breastplate and sometimes it, you know, gets a little higher. And so it's yep. not also the big hits. It's not also the big hits, the big power hits. It's those repetitive hits that are taken that a, a old lineman takes day after day after day after day. That's also a big effect on, on, uh, on a player. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people, uh, like you're talking about, see the big hits and they're, they're thinking that. But uh, I was an old offensive lineman. You play in D-line and tight end. Uh, you've probably heard yeah. about the, the fight going on inside the phone booth. Uh, for the old school phone sure. booth, it was a small little compact area, but it it was the Wild West in that area. There was a lot of contact going on. And, heck, back in, back in my day in, in high school – I was cool because my face mask was all chewed up and different things like that because I was throwing my face in there. I was getting my face involved. And now learning the effects of all those things, uh, I, I'm probably going to say I'm part of that 98%. I, I don't know for certain, but I'm probably going to fall into that 98 percentile um, with the CTE. What type of effects What type of effects are you learning about now that, that – with CTE that m people may not associate that is going on with post-concussion type of syndromes and different things like that. Not only just the CTE, but just post-concussion type stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, there's, there's a lot of effects. I think I'm, 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 you know, knocking wood, you know, I obviously, you know, I never you know, hope I, I don't fall into that category, but then again, you know, I'm not sure if I'm ever <laughs> want to be tested. Want to know? I'll be I'll be yeah. frank with you on that. Uh, so I just you know deal with the consequences as they come. Um, but yeah, look, you know, there's there's a lot. You know, I, I know a lot of different players, and you get uh, some some. Uh, you know, my brother, he had uh, my middle brother again. You know, he actually he was a wrestler too, WWE, NXT, WWE, and so he actually got a really bad TBI. Um, of, of effect like uh, when he was wrestling like you know they say it's fake but it's, it's called real fake right if a yeah. person missed it if a hand's supposed to be there and in, in this case the hand's supposed to be there to protect his head and it wasn't boom you hit your head on the step right so what happens what can happen is that you know there's a lot of ir ir irritabil irritability irritability excuse me uh, you know that goes on you know some players uh, you know even sometimes like myself you know can't be in a lot of light for a long time Right, so like rather have it have it dark and, or, or darker darker uh, scenario, um, you know, and then it, it can escalate from there, you know, um, you know, different things. Maybe it uh, fumbling words like I'm doing now, you know, yeah. um, um, being being able to just not remember simple things that you like to remember, like how to get back home or 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 et cetera. And you know, and there's obviously you know feeling isolated uh, in certain aspects. So there's a lot that. Of, of, of things that can transpire. And so I think the biggest thing is at least what we try to do, especially, you know, with around NFLPA and, and the guys that, that, I, that I'm surrounded is just try to be as lifting lifting as possible and, and try to put yourself in better moments. Right. And uh, for myself, I can tell you my personal experience is like what helps me is like try to do things and more like an alternative wellness scenarios, you know, yogas and, and breath of work, things that like, don't require a lot of uh, don't require like pills and things like that because sometimes that just adds to the as to the problem. So yeah, I mean there there's a lot. You know, I, I can't sit here and name every aspect, but it's because sometimes yeah. you just don't know. It, until, unfortunately, until it's too late, right? You think somebody's like perfect, and then wow, you found out that wow they were they were hurting and they're not here or whatever the case is. So unfortunately, there's a lot of symptoms, and that's what we're looking to help detect faster. So we don't so a lot of players don't have. Um, you know, can, can at least get better help faster. Yeah, I know. I, I definitely, I, I, I really like that. And, and like I said, I've, I've only had one diagnosed uh, and that I'm certain that that's not the case because uh, different, different time frames. Nice, um, for sure. So the, the product that, that, that you're talking about with the detection where can the public get that? Is it is it available to the public? Is it something that just is in the private sector? And, and I, 
ballpark range of like finances and stuff like that like yeah. how affordable is it if you don't mind me asking absolutely so i will say we're still it's it's still we're st we have not officially put it to market yet. We're about okay. uh, nine, nine, uh, nine months, nine to twelve months out. We have a few more uh, tests to run, and then, and obviously, uh, you know, we're in this uh, in a uh, another funding stage to, uh, to to get us to market. So we're we're a little bit out, but we want to make sure we got everything out. But it's, it's, we're really fast moving. Um, uh, when it does come out, uh, it'll be seventy five dollars for two, um, for two kits. So you have two kits in one. Um, and what and you want to compare that compare that to a you know four hundred four hundred uh, you know dollar potential CT scan or MRI you know that you would yep. have to get and all those things you know and there's you know and and uh, so there's a huge gap in terms of there and that's if you got insurance if you don't have insurance then you're, you know you're paying probably more so yeah. again it's it's something that you can have real portable keep you know as an emergency next to the the band aids and the peroxide and and the other things that you keep in a kit. Or on the sideline, et cetera. But also, we wanted to make sure that it was affordable, that uh, that a family can go pick up, a mom can go pick up in CVS or Wal Walgreens or whatever, and be able to just pull off the shelf. So that's that's our, our goal of of distribution and how we'll be able to make it readily available to the to the market. Oh, that's fantastic! That's fantastic. So uh, we're, we're seeing, like like you were saying, we're seeing the protective measures coming out and the different technology with the protective measures. But now, having that immediate idea okay the protective measures were there something happened now we know yes and that's great and that's great that that it's going to be affordable for i mean my youth program is is all volunteers so we're working on fundraising and our registration fees and stuff like that so the fact that it's in, in a price point that is affordable for for the majority of the population out there is definitely beneficial so that's great, great to hear Absolutely. And that's, you know, look, that's on a retail one off scenario. So like, you know, for schools and for, for organizations, of course, the price is a lot lower, you know, because you're going to have, have, have more, uh, you know, more, more packages and et cetera. So, you know, th that's the number one. We want to make sure we don't want to just put something together and then it's still is unaffordable and, and unaccessible. We want to make sure that it's, it's affordable and accessible where anybody that uh, it's a it's a it's a matter of a, an emergency, just as you again with a band aid. You don't most people don't preliminary get uh, excuse me don't get well I guess you could get band aids after the fact. You generally have an emergency kit because it's an emergency. So we wanted to make sure that it's available in an emergency scenario that you have in that kit, just like you you know with the other things. That's great. That's great stuff. Well, John. Um... Once again, I, I appreciate you taking the time out. I know you, you've been very busy w w with your schedule. Um, I, I, I think the information that you passed along is, is fantastic. Um, if at the post production again, I'll throw in the onto the uh, show notes the the different uh, companies that you had mentioned for anybody else that is out there. I will also include a link to the company that that you're now currently working for. Um, is, is there anything else that that my listeners may want want to hear about uh, regarding safety measures or, or concussion type of stuff that you could help them out with. Yeah, look, I would just say, you know, continue the good fight of concussion care. Um, it is a real thing. It's an uh, uh, it's an evolving uh, problem, so to speak. I mean, look, U Sports, they just came out with a report man, a couple of days ago. Uh, geez, I can't remember the numbers, but it's uh, it's basically growing year over year, which means that there's going to be more impact, more contact and more impact. Uh, you know, and especially in, in football, right? And so, you know, the more education and the more information that's out there that we that can be measured in, in addition to the, uh, you know, the products and the and the devices that can help, the better. Um, also, I actually it's called Great Skin. The 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 cap was talking about Great Great Skin Shiesty. Okay. I will send you. I'll send you a link and some information on it so you can put it in in, in the notes and everything. Perfect. But. Uh, uh, it, it is a, a, a it's a you know, we look to be a great partner with them uh, as well and and like I said continue the avenue of concussion care and and keeping everybody getting everybody and keeping everybody as healthy as possible um, you know as, as they go through go through life so well John if there's anything that that I can do on on the, on the high school officials end please always feel free to reach out to me uh, I, I would love to be a resource because again I, I still personally i still have my child going through it but i love the sport and i want to see all the kids come out of the game 
having fun and remembering the game and coming out safe. Ultimately, like all those things are, are high on my list of when I officiate the game, I want the kids coming out safe and remembering the game, not me, <laughs> and, and going from there. So uh, if there's Absolutely. anything that, that I could help out with, please, uh, please feel free to reach out. Well, Mike, I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, Conan ladies and gentlemen, Medtech, that is uh, Conan, Conan, Med, Conan com. That's uh, where you can find us, read more about us, and uh, follow us and, and our progress and, and, you know, and, and get our list for when we're uh, you know, available for sale. So, Awesome stuff, John. Thank you very much once again. All right, well, ladies you. and gentlemen, uh, again, check out the, the, the show notes at the end. I, I will have all this information uh, documented down so you can click on the different links on the different show notes. Uh, once again, for, for all the fans that are out there, please hit the like and subscribe button. Go to my YouTube page and you, you can see the conversation that John and I had. And again, you'll be able to find all the links right there. Hit like and subscribe there. John, once again, thank you very much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. You as well, Mike. All right, sir. We are done recording. Okay. Good, good. Uh, and looks How did like that look? If you're enjoying today's show and you want to show your appreciation to Mike D, you can buy him a beer by clicking on the link in the show notes or go to buymeacoffee.com backslash Mike D the referee. And as always, make sure to click follow and give five stars. Thanks for listening. Cheers.